This is Michael Monroe from a better complete development engineering firm. I'm a CLD and I've been using LabVIEW for over 20 years. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to use a LabVIEW add-on and simple scripts to perform over a thousand VI edits in under two minutes. I'll run six different scripts on a set of over 170 VIs. At the end I'll show the scripts and tell where you can download them. Along the way I'll identify 16 steps of the process that are impossible with LabVIEW. But first I'll explain why this cannot be done in LabVIEW alone. Here we have a sample project with over 1,500 items and over 50 classes. I selected this code because it was created by several developers over several versions of LabVIEW with different preferences. I want to find similar VIs with inconsistencies and run simple scripts to clean up the VIs. Batch editing is a very simple three-step process. Identify similar VIs, select them, and run a script on the selection. For this demo, I will focus on the Assessor VIs created by LabVIEW for data member access. I'll start with the read VIs. I want to run a script on all of the read VIs in all of the classes. I can't do that in LabVIEW because I can't select anything that's not continuous unless I select them one at a time. If I try to use the find, I can find VIs that start with the word read. I'll put a space. and I get 208 items. But from here, I can't multi-select these items or highlight them in the project or run a script on them or even get them in VI Analyzer. I can go straight to VI Analyzer from here, but I have the same selection criteria. Either I select in the project or I go to VI Analyzer and I have limited selection there. Once I get my VI Analyzer results, again, I'm presented with the choice of fixing VIs one at a time. This is a test that ran on all the VIs in the project. This one test took over five minutes. I'm expected to click on each one, open the VI, edit the VI, save and close the VI, and continue on to the next one. This is a typical VI that doesn't look very good. It has an unbundle that's off to one side, and there's a mixture of both icon view and not icon view. What I want is to get these VIs to all look the same. Now if this VI was all not icon view, VI Analyzer would not catch it. It only looks at one VI at a time. I want all of my VIs to be the same. This VI Analyzer test did not fix the problem, it only found it. I'm going to fix this problem. For this demonstration, we'll be using Property Inspector, available on the LabVIEW Tools Network. Property Inspector is a LabVIEW add-on that filters, searches, selects, and batch edits VIs. I could change one property of a thousand VIs in a single click, but today we'll be using the scripting functions to edit the VI code. Here we have the project open and see all the same objects that appear with up to 28 properties visible in parallel. We can see at the bottom here the exact number of items displayed from the project. We're going to start by hiding objects we don't want to see. We're going to be working on block diagrams, so I'm going to get rid of controls that don't have block diagrams and some other stuff I just don't want to see right now. Over 1,200 items remain. From here, we're going to search for a window title that contains class. This gives us just the VIs that are members of a class. From here, I want an item name that starts with read. I'll put a space. I'm going to search in the existing results. I have 730 items now, and now I have 179. So after starting with over 1,700 VIs, I now have a group that represents all of the read data members for all of the classes together. We're going to have a look at the first 15 block diagrams. I'm going to use control tab on the keyboard to scroll through the block diagrams. You'll notice as I do this 
how the taskbar alternates every other window to show only the block diagrams. Here's a good example of problem VI. The unbundle is off to one side. It's a mixture of icon view and not icon view. Labels are sometimes to the right, sometimes on top. I'd like to set that to the system preference. We'll go ahead and close all of these windows. I'm going to select the script, center on bundle. And I'm going to run this on all VIs. Here we are opening each VI, running the script, saving the VI, and closing the VI. 179 VIs modified by script in 14 and a half seconds. Let's take a look at what this result is. This is a big improvement. So now we're going to address some of the other problems with this code. Here we have the label, it's off to one side. This is icon view, this is not. And Darren Nanager does a great presentation on brain dead lab view programming, where he talks about case structures that don't serve any purpose. This is a good example because in the other case, that view returns nothing of value. This case structure doesn't serve a purpose here. This error should be handled upstream or downstream from this VI. We're going to take it out. First, let's fix the labels. We're going to use a common quick drop script downloaded from the community and run it on all VIs. Here we need to specify whether it's on the front panel or the back panel. Shift is pressed and any text. Here we're running a standard quick drop script to move the labels to the setting based upon the system default and about 12 seconds. From here, we'll go on move, remove the case structure. Run that on all. This script finds the case structure, selects the no error case, then removes the case structure, leaving just the no error case. Twenty-two seconds. Okay, from here, we are going to do one more modification before we move on to the front panel. We're going to run a VI script, set icon view. Now this VI script is different in that it returns a failure if it finds icons that are not icon view, thereby identifying the VIs that have been modified. To show you that, I'm going to choose Update selections on failure. We'll see what happens there. This is going to flag the VIs that were modified. These are the VIs that failed the test and got cleaned up. Let's show those VIs in the project. Here we have VIs that failed the script shown in the project. Pretty sure there's no other way to do that. Let's look at these codes. I'm going to hold control and hit open VI. Here we have the final product. All the icons are the same, all the labels are the same, error case is gone. Okay, let's move on to the front panel and make a change there. I'm going to go back to here 
and press OpenVI. I'm now looking at the front panels of those same VIs I was just looking at the block diagram. Let's use Control Tab to toggle through them. They're not necessarily bad, they're just very inconsistent. We're going to run a quick drop script to clean them all up. This is a line to connect our pane. And we're going to run on all the eyes. Notice I didn't bother to even close them. This is on the front panel. No shift, no text. You'll notice that the first 15 VIs I left open are automatically closed after running the script. The steps to save and close are configurable. In case you prefer to leave the VIs open or leave the changes uncommitted, although it's not recommended to leave 170 VIs open. Peter Krasowski from National Instruments in Hungary posts on LinkedIn that he runs this script a thousand times a day. I commented back that he should use Property Inspector to run it once on a thousand VIs. This is a standard script downloaded from the LabVIEW community for free, and it does a wonderful job. Let's look at the results. Here we have the VIs consistently placed, cleaned up, and sized according to the contents. For our sixth and final edit, we're going to switch to a different set of VIs. We're going to go back to the previous search of window title contains class. Back to the 730 items we had before. Now we want item name starts with right and a space. Search in. Now I have 178 VIs that represent the data member accessor for writing the contents. Let's look at these VIs too. The same problem as before. The right bundle is off to one side. We're going to clean that up too. Center bundle. Let's select all and turn that off and run it. This is the same script, looks for the case structure, finds the bundle item, calculates the relative position, and centers it in the case structure. 16 seconds. Let's look at these VIs. Okay, big improvement. We're gonna stop here. I'm gonna show you the scripts. These are the VI analyzer tests. This one, center unbundle, just finds the case structure, unbundler, calculates the position, updates the position. Center bundle, pretty much the same thing. Calculates position. Set icon view. This actually looks to see whether or not the icon view is incorrect and determines whether or not to fail the result. And remove case structure. Finds a case structure, chooses no error, removes it. Simple stuff. And here are the quick drop plugins that I demonstrated. This is Move Labels, available from the Quick Drop community, and Align to Connector Pane, wonderful VI, freely available. To get these, you can just go to my product homepage, where I provide links to the Quick Drop community and the VI Analyzer page, and here is a zip file containing all of the scripts I demonstrated today.
Thank you.